Okay, let's have a look. The first three questions are definitions. You can get them from your book. State Newton's second law of motion. So Newton's second law of motion says force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum per unit time. That's Newton's second law. Uh, the principle of conservation of momentum says that the total momentum in a system, what is it? The total momentum in a closed system before a collision takes place is equal to the total momentum in the closed system after the collision takes place, provided that there's no net external force acting. And then the third point here is uh, principle, uh, the third definition is the principle of conservation of energy. So that one is um, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed in from one form into another. So there are the three basic um, definitions. And now on to the calculation, the meaty part of the question, 32 marks. An object a of mass 45 grams traveling horizontally with speed 6.2 when it strikes sphere b of mass 80 grams hang at the end of a string the string is free to move about point p which is 1.2 meters above the center so the radius the length of the pendulum the string is uh, 1.2 meters during the collision a and b are in contact for 25 milliseconds after the collision, A recoils with a speed of 1.1. Calculate the force exerted on B, uh, exerted by B on A. So this is making use of our first definition, um, which says that uh, force is the rate of change of momentum per unit time. So uh, the time we know, it's 25 milliseconds. So that's 25 times 10 to the minus three. Um, and the change in momentum, so it's the force exerted on B. So we have to look at what's happening to B. Um, the change in momentum would be the momentum at the end minus the momentum at the start. So, um, what's happening? Well, this, this guy here is 45 grams. And it's traveling with 6.2 meters per second. And it strikes this resting sphere of 80 grams. And B hangs uh, vertically and the string's free to move. And during the collision, A and B are in contact. And after the collision, A recoils with a speed of uh, 1.1 so that's a recoils back that way with 1.1 now actually this is a pretty conceptually uh, tough question because you're not given the speed of b after the collision and um I think that's what I would want to work out first before I can even calculate the force. Um, and it's kind of weird because I feel in this situation it'd be easier to do part five first. Now, I do know how you can do this first because, because momentum is uh, conserved it means that uh, the change of momentum here will equal the change of momentum here. But for me, naturally, I would want to do this part first and use that answer into this part. I'm not 100% sure if that's a legitimate move you can make um, in the leave insert. So perhaps I won't do that. Okay. So part four here. Let's calculate the change in momentum on A. So that would be its mass, mv, uh, its momentum afterwards minus momentum at the start. So you can take the m out since it's a common term. So it will be 0 0.045 and then minus 1.1 because it's heading to the backwards. 
I'm, yeah, I just have to be clear now. I'm taking this direction as positive and this direction as negative. Uh, minus um, u, which is 6.2. So that would equal 0 0.045 times minus 1.1 minus 6.2. So that's minus 0 0.3285 kilogram meters per second. Now the force on B will be the change in momentum um, on B over its time. Uh, but because momentum is conserved, it means the change in momentum uh, on B will just be equal and opposite that of A's. So if I just delete the minus and divide by 25 milliseconds, I'll have the answer as 13.14 newtons is what I got. Pretty tricky question. The maximum velocity of B, so the, the, the velocity of B, so um, we could do the conservation of momentum formula if we wanted to. We could say M1 U1 plus M2 U2 equals M1 V1 plus M2 V2. So um, M1, let's say, is A, so that's 45 grams times U1, which is 6.2, plus M2, which is 80 grams, times U2. Well, it starts at rest, so it's zero, so I won't even bother writing that down. Equals M1 uh, V1, which is now backwards, minus 1.1 plus 0 0.08 V2, the velocity of B. So I can solve this to get the V2, the velocity of B, pretty easily. 0 0.045 times 6.2 plus 1.1 times 0 0.045 divided by 0 0.08. And that will be 4.10625. Meters per second. Uh, okay. The magnitude and direction of the centripetal force on B. Well, the direction is easy. It's it's towards P. So that's taken care of. Uh, but we'll have to calculate the centripetal force. So that formula, if I remember correctly, is M v squared over the radius um, the magnitude and direction of the maximum centripetal force on b yeah okay 0 0.08 times that speed squared divided by 1.2 the radius um, so that is one point now I don't want to write all the decimals down for this one the most I've gone for this question is one two three, five so I don't want to go any more than that one two I'll just say one two four one it's not clear what number of significant figures you should give your answer to within this question uh, Newton's okay so I got the force, I got the velocity, I got the magnitude and direction, the maximum height gained by B. So that is uh, conservation of energy. So the kinetic energy it has here will equal the potential energy it has up here. So um, let's make a bit of space for that one. Uh, where are we now? Okay, we'll squeeze it up here. So that's 
mgh equals a half m v squared. So the m's cancel. So uh, you can divide by g. Sorry, so that looks a bit messy, but it's v squared over 2g would be the maximum height. So the v squared, 4.10625 squared uh, divided by 2g. So the maximum height is 86.03 centimeters. Um, okay. The maximum angular displacement of this of the string. Right, okay. So that's this angle here. Um so we know that this length is one point two and we know that this height is the zero point eight six. So we can work out this height as the 1.2 minus that 0 0.86 answer. Um, so it will just be a bit of trigonometry. That angle A, uh, what's that? That's uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. That'll be cos inverse that is 0 0.339, etc. over 1.2. Uh, so that's 73.55 degrees. Okay. Draw a label diagram to show the force, okay. Doki, the label diagram now of the forces acting on B when it's at its maximum height. Okay, so there's B. Um, there is a tension in the string, and then there's a weight. Um, Yeah, that's it. That's basically it. I mean, I could label it more weight, tension, the string, mass B, but what else is there? I think that's it. What is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of B after the string is cut? Okay, well, the string is cut. So its acceleration is downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of B after the string is cut? Yeah, definitely downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm going to pause this because I want to check the answers. Okay, let's have a look at the answers together for the first time. So Newton's second law states force proportional to rate of change of momentum. We got that. State the principle of conservation of momentum. We got that. And uh, conservation of energy. We got that. The 13.4. We got that. Um, did we get the 4.11? Yeah, rounded off. Yep, yeah, 4.11. We got that. Did we get the 1.12? We got that. Um, did we get the 0 0.86? Yeah, yeah, I remember getting that. Ah, no. Must have made a mistake with the angle here. Everything else is correct, just my angle is wrong. 73.6. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. The maximum angular displacement of the string. Yeah. Yeah, so the only answer that I'm not matching up with here is the angle. Um, but it is the same formula, unless I just typed it in wrong on the calculator. Let's have a look here. Cos inverse 
1.2 minus the height, that's the 0 0.86 over 1.2. Oh, yeah, it is 78.4, or well, 78.6. I have less decimal places than they do. So, um, I, oh, no, actually, I did write that. Yeah, there it is right there. Why was I thinking it was 26? No, that is correct. I'm confused myself. No, so we got uh, we got all the parts here correct. That's full marks for that question. Because uh, the next part is downward arrow labeled as weight and labeled tension arrow in the correct direction. And then 9.8 meters per second squared and downward. So that's nice. I'm happy with that. Full marks. That's good. And that is a very difficult question. In fact, um, more difficult than usual, I think. So this was a good question to, to ask for. Okay, let's stop the video there. Uh, okay, let's... Uh